Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. My friends, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful day. It's a wonderful day to be alive. It's a fantastic day to be a Christian. It's a great day to tell somebody about the love of God and about Jesus Christ and what Christ did for us on the cross and that Jesus is coming again. It's a wonderful day to spread his love and to spread the good news about Jesus. And at the same time, my friends, there's a lot of unrest going on in the world today. And my heart and my mind is still where it was last week about this time when I came to you. Concern for Israel, concern for the fig tree, concern for the homeland of Jesus Christ, the, the land, the place where Christ will return to this earth. I'm concerned about what's going on in Israel, and my friends, you should be also. Now, let me tell you something. Not only am I concerned about what's going on over there in Israel proper, and with the conflict, the war, the, 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 the attack uh, last Saturday that, that uh, was launched by Hamas, and all the reports that are coming out where uh, mothers and their children was bound together and then set on fire, kids being beheaded, the atrocities are, are just uh, too gruesome and, and uh, to describe uh, fully uh, in, this, uh, in this setting. Israel was attacked and, uh, and, and Israelis were killed. Israelis were taken hostage. Americans were killed, Americans are held hostage, and in a country of a little more than 9 million, when you kill some 1,300, that's like our 9-11 times 7 or times 8. And already you're hearing cries from certain ones. They're crying for peace, stop the violence, but they don't understand that if, if, we, if peace is manifested as Israel not getting retribution, if Israel stop their progression right now and abandon their war plans, Hamas would consider this a tremendous victory. And in six months or less, the same thing will happen again. My prayer is for the people of Israel. My prayer is that the God of the Bible intervenes and that God anoints Israel to wipe Hamas, not the Palestinian, not the Palestinian people, but Hamas and all who are in bed with Hamas. God save them or wipe them off the map. But God, I pray that you not leave these people in place and in power to attack Israel again. Now, my friends, without trying to be political, what we're viewing is failed U.S. foreign policy. The, the, the big culprit behind this is Iran. And what gave Iran her strength back is when the current administration, look it up yourselves, I'm sure you will, when they fail to enforce the sanctions that were put in place by the previous administration, or oh, it was a s stiff sanctions that dried up Iran's money, that dried up their ability to sell oil, that had the economy and the, of Iran and the nation of Iran on their knees, had the Iranian people protesting in the street. And by the way, during that time, Hamas, Hezbollah, and all of those groups attacked no one. They certainly did not attack Israel because if, if for no other reason, they had no money. 
But when the current administration took over and lifted the sanctions, Iran begins to sell oil to China, to Russia, and other places. Billions flowed in, 40 billion, 50 billion, 60 billion and more from the sale of oil. All of a sudden, Iran is back. Iran now has money to send to uh, Hezbollah, to send to uh, Hamas, to send to these these uh, uh, organizations that want Israel, these terrorist organizations that want Israel wiped out off the face of the map. They do not want a two-state solution. They don't want Israel to exist. They want to kill the Jews. And by the way, all Americans who are watching today, these people view Israel as the little Satan. Guess who they view as the great Satan, the big Satan? You guessed it, the United States of America. So for what's being done or attempted in Israel, if they had the chance and had their way, they would attempt the same thing here. And some, this is one of, the, one of the reasons why we need a closed border. Uh, there's no telling who has come into our country already with the border uh, being left wide open as it has been uh, during this current administration. I'm not trying to be political. I'm not trying to blame anybody, but I am telling you the truth. I'm telling you what has transpired. When the money was dried up, Hamas could do nothing. When the sanctions were lifted off of Iran, and Iran could sell or not lift it, just not enforce. All of a sudden, Iran is back, their money is back, and here we are today. Doesn't it disturb you to see the sheer number of uh, college students and Americans protesting in the street um, uh, in favor of Hamas, uh, waving the Palestinian flag in favor of Hamas, blaming Israel for the atrocities, blaming Israel for this, and they chant from the river uh, to the sea, uh, Israel must go. The Jordan River to the Mediterranean. All right, uh, if, if, if all of this land is to be free of Israel, free of the Jews, we'll kill the Jews, we're gonna eradicate them. Well, these people are saying we're gonna take, we're gonna make Israel disappear. Well, I'm here to tell you, that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen because the God of this book has deemed it so. And I pray, I pray that uh, the U.S., this great country, continues to stand by Israel. I was blessed by some of the things that the president had to say yesterday uh, concerning uh, Israel. And he's going to give a speech tonight, and this uh, taping is uh, one that is done uh, hours before the president's speech, so I don't know what he's going to say. But I do. I must. Say, I must say I was quite stunned, horrified, and disappointed that he has pledged to give a hundred million dollars to the Palestinian people. Why? Why wouldn't? What's wrong with that? He's giving that money to Hamas because Hamas is in charge of Gaza. Hamas is in charge of the Palestinian people. There is no, uh, in, in Gaza at this time, there is no group that is in charge of Gaza that can control uh, Hamas. Hamas is in charge. Hamas will get that money. And Hamas has already demonstrated by stealing fuel and things that the United Nations sent in so that the generators could run and the people could have supplies. Hamas took that for themselves.
Hamas has on times past, back in 2014, when during the Obama administration, when we were doing appeasement with Iran and we gave them 140 billion, flew it over in a plane at night. Remember that? Well, all of a sudden, Hamas attacks again. And Hamas sets up her headquarters in the bottom of a hospital. So these people uses the Palestinian people as human shields. They are dedicated to one thing, the eradication of the Hebrew people, of the Jewish nation. They want to wipe Israel off the face of the map. I'm here to tell you that it's not going to take place. And speaking of that, when the atrocities of Israel took place the other day, when they attacked last Saturday before last, I think on October the 9th, when they did that, uh, Representative uh, Rashida Tlaib, Rashida Tlaib, you wouldn't know this, but she was born in Detroit, Michigan. Now, uh, uh, you, you see a picture of her there on the screen. Uh, born in Detroit, Michigan, um, uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, she's a part of Congress and she represents the 12th district. Um, uh, and she's represented it since 2023. 20, she went to Western Michigan University, Thomas M. Coley Law School, uh, nationality American. You wouldn't know it uh, by the way she talked when this American Congresswoman was asked about, uh, Israeli babies having their heads chopped off, um, she had no comment. She said nothing. She would not condemn babies having their heads cut off, civilians being slaughtered, people going to a festival during a holiday to celebrate, killed, murdered by Hamas. She said nothing. Terrorists have um, cut off babies' heads and burned children alive. Do you support Israel's rights to defend themselves against this brutality? We're just going to go through here. You can't comment about Hamas terrorists chopping off babies' heads? And you see the footage there as she's walking through uh, the halls of Congress. A, a, a reporter is asking her questions and you don't see heartbreak. You don't see pain. You don't see any of this because these were Jews being killed. But now when the report came uh, that Israel bombed a hospital and we all know by now that those reports were not, was not ac accurate. Actually, it was a bomb from the Islamic Jihad that actually went off course. And by the way, the bomb didn't hit the hospital. It hit the hospital parking lot and it didn't kill 500 people. Hundreds of people were killed, but it wasn't five. But the point is, it was not Israel. It was not Israel. Israel didn't do it. Rashida Tlaib, a member of Congress, a sitting Congresswoman, whips up Hamas supporters and they go into the Capitol building. They interrupt the procedures that are taking place in the building. Kind of sounds a little bit uh, like January the 6th. And uh, and and during her speech, when she's talking about the, the lie and she's crying that Israel killed, um, bombed the hospital, Israel, they bombed uh, uh, Palestinians in a hospital, which didn't take place. Then she begins to cry. But as an American, not just as a member of the United States Congress, I am ashamed I am ashamed that they're saying, not yet, maybe next week. Shame. Shame. Not yet, Rashida. Maybe, maybe in a couple of days. How many more have to die? And 
and if we don't get back to our shared humanity, I don't think we're ever, ever going to be able to come back from this. And to my president, to our president, yes, he still are, well, hold on. I know, I, hey, I want him to know, as a Palestinian American, is also somebody of Muslim faith, I'm not gonna forget this. Now, she can cry if Palestinians are killed, but she shed no tears for dead Israeli babies that had been beheaded. Bishop Wooden, why are you talking about this? And notice this, she threatens President Biden. Uh, she's a Democrat, and she says to President Biden, to my president, to our president, I want him to know as a Palestinian American and some, born in uh, Detroit, Michigan, as a Palestinian American born in Detroit, Michigan in 1976, a Palestinian American and somebody in Muslim faith, she's a Muslim, I'm not going to forget this. And I think a lot of people are not going to forget this. Oh my, President Biden, not all Americans are with you on this one. And you need to understand that. We are literally watching people commit genocide and killing the vast majority like this and we still stand by and say nothing, we will remember this, she warned. Now, let's hear her make a retraction because it was the Islamic Jihad, one of their bombs that went off, went astray, probably aimed at Israelis, which, which had it connected and killed some Jews, uh, this American-born uh, Muslim uh, uh, elected to Congress would not have shed a tear. It would have been perfectly fine to, to kill Jewish civilians, Jewish enlisted people, just Jewish, Jewish. I mean, Jewish Jews in the womb, Jews in the arm, uh, in the mother's arm, burn them alive, that's all right. Why wouldn't, are you talking about this? On this, you, you're gonna invite us to Bible study. Sound like, you, more, uh, you sound more like the news than anything else. Because it is important for Christians, born again believers, to not fall asleep during this time. To not get fooled during this time to not get tricked by the U.S. media, which is as corrupt as they come during this time. It is so important that we keep our eye on the fig tree. It is so important that we keep our eye on God's holy land. It is so important that we keep our eyes on the scripture and that we believe the word of God and we believe what God said about what was going to happen in the last days, what Jesus said would, would happen with regards to Israel, the things that would take place. It is so important that we know what the scripture says about these things and that we say what the scripture says, that we believe the word of the Lord. And if we do these things, my friends, we are going to be just fine. But if we do not see these things through the lenses of the scriptures, we will get pulled off course. We will begin to be like so many other misguided people we will, t we will side with the wrong group. And in this, to side with the wrong group is to take arms against the God of the Bible of which you stand no chance of defeating. For he is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords, the God of the Bible, 
praise the Lord, is so powerful that no man, no one can stay his hand and no one can say to him, what doest thou? And the things that God has determined must be done. We're beginning to witness the time of Jacob's trouble, but there is a deliverance that will take place. Now I'm praying for Israel and I'm praying for America. I'm praying that the Christian body, that the born again, that the washed in the blood, we know that the world is going to be the world and the world uh, don't have the directions. But what's, what's troubling me is the number of believers, brother Gary, who are following the world who are following the world's lead. And we, we're we saying, well, we need to, we just, we just need to lead the Bible out of it. You can't lead the Bible out of it. The Bible is, is what's being fulfilled right here before our eyes. And tonight, my friends, I'm going to talk about it. Now I'm on my way back to brother Stephen. <laughs> Cause I'm, st hey, we're Stephen strong for a reason. And like Stephen, our goal is not to fit in with the world. Uh, our goal is not to be acquitted. We identify with the God of the Bible and we identify with him without apology. And we stand with the nation of Israel. Oh, she's in, she's in darkness right now. Spiritually, she's not where she's supposed to be. But God's going to change that. A revival is going to break out. And I do believe just as God used the famine in Genesis chapter 43, Gary, we were talking about it. God used the famine to deal with J uh, Jacob and, uh, and to change his mind and to get him to send Benjamin down to Egypt along with his sons, uh, 11 of them, because, you know, Joseph was holding, he was holding uh, a Simeon. God used that famine. It got worse. And, uh, uh, it changed his mind and, and the plan of God came out of that. Well, things may get worse, my friends, before they get better. But I tell you this, better is coming. Now, join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for, and you guessed it, Bible study. <laughs> man, I can't wait. I, listen. All I'm talking about is Bible study and, and in my clothes, I want to show you this and I'm going to do an interview with him. I have in my hand a book that you've got to get. It's called Awakened by God. And this book, my friends, was written by none other than the chairman of our deacons board, the chairman of our financial board here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, the one and only Deacon Joseph Morgan. And I am so proud of Deacon Morgan. Uh, the book says, Healed, Delivered, and Set Free. Deacon Morgan is a 20 plus year survivor of a deadly form of cancer in the bones that there is no cure from. One Sunday, yours truly got up and said, if you praise God, he'll heal your body. Deacon Morgan got up and danced and danced and danced and danced and danced some more. And he went back to his seat and said to his friend, Deacon Millen, he said to his wife, the Lord just healed me today. He went back to the doctor. The doctor said to him, he did it. He said, what's that, doc? He says, I can't find cancer in you. He never had any chemo. He never got treatment. The Lord touched him and let him live to become the author of this great book. And uh, it's out there on Amazon. You can get it. The name of it is Awakened by God. You want to read this book, Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Joseph Morgan Jr. Yours truly did the preface. You want this book. I want you to get it. It's going to bless your life. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.